Hey everybody, this is Pastor Roberts, and I am excited to be able to share something with you. Again, um, we're using this particular vlog to be able to disciple um, individuals in how to be able to live free from a self-centered life. We know um, that self-centeredness is the means that Satan uses to br bring any kind of evil in our life. Any type of strife is because a person <clears throat> is operating in self-centeredness, any kind of division. There's self-centeredness that's going on, hurt and so forth. You're thinking about yourself. He can't do anything in your life outside of you first being centered on self. So, so we understand that, you know, that's the reason why he's highly motivated you to get you to, for your feelings to be hurt. He's highly motivated you for you to be grieved and mad and sad and lonely and depressed. And he's highly motivated you for, for you to be like that. Um, you, you ever notice that when it comes to those kind of negative emotions, you have to resist them because they're like naturally trying things in life is naturally trying to evoke, you know, those type of emotions. There's no you don't have to stir those emotions. Um, so, forth, but you really have to put forth effort to resist those emotions because those things are set, you know, in, in alignment with the curse. And Satan, therefore, obviously wants us to be in agreement with the curse and our life to be terrible. So so we know that in order for our life to be what the Lord would have it to be, we must make our mind up that I am going to live free from being self-centered, um, so forth. So with that in mind, I was thinking about that. Obviously, we know that grace is, is the means to live separated from self-centeredness, to be able to break free from the yoke and the bondage of being, you know, subservient to, you know, being consumed by yourself, so forth. Why, though? Why? All right. Number one is this is because God is almighty. He's almighty God. In other words, when you understand how powerful God is, that there is no situation that you could ever find yourself in. There's no situation that people can help assist you to be in. There's no situation that society can try to cast upon you. That God's grace is not more powerful to be able to not only neutralize it, but to put you into a stratosphere that you have never known before. He, he's almighty. The Bible calls him El Shaddai. He's the God of more than enough. He is. He doesn't know it. He doesn't have a hat. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. All right. So you have to understand the Bible says it like this. Where sin does abound, Grace does much more about praise God. So you hear these puppies because we're doing this thing for real. All right. So I got puppies that are they're getting ready to find their home here in a few days here, so forth. But they're kind of upset because mama don't want to nurse them no more. All right. But we ain't talking about that. We are talking about grace to live free from a self-centered life. So number one, it, how is this is because he is almighty. Number two is because the grace of God is so powerful and so on another level, uh, it supersedes the realm of the senses. So that means grace will be working for you when believed. It'll be working on your behalf, even though you don't have any sense realm evidence of it. All right. So you don't have to become self-centered and look into your senses and how you feel and what this says or what that data says, so forth for feedback on if the grace is availing. No, the Bible makes it plain so forth that his grace is above the level and realm of the census, all right? So you can rest assured that his grace is working on your behalf, doing for you what you could not do for yourself, even though you might not feel anything, and even though in the natural, nothing might seem different, all right? Thirdly, the third reason why, you know, his grace is, will move you out of self-centeredness and put Jesus back in the center of your life so far is because his grace, when received, all right, or when believed, um, literally, literally, okay, his grace, when received, is unconditional, okay? His grace is unconditional, all right? Now, that right there is revolutionary because you don't know nobody hardly that deals with you unconditionally. Most people are very fortunate if you have one person in your life that you can be able to say, no matter what, they're going to love me. They will never leave me. They will never forsake me. They won't cast me aside, so forth. 
uh, I'm not seasonal to them. I'm forever to them. Most people, you are very fortunate if you can name one person who loves you unconditionally. This is the reason why the gospel is absolutely radical. God doesn't have love. God is love. When the Bible says God is love, the book of 1 John, the word love there is agape, unconditional love, no strings attached. So I'm telling you, though, even though you don't know nobody who might love you on condition, there is one somebody, I, got, I can't scream, but I want to, there's one somebody who loves you absolutely unconditionally, all right? And that's God Almighty. He loves you unconditionally. There's no strings attached. So what he offers to you is without strings, all right? Salvation, for example, let's prove it. Salvation is without strings, all right? The Bible says that you're saved by grace through faith. You know, there's, there's no boasting, you know, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's no boast. There's no strings. If there were strings, then it could be boasting because if you did the strings or did the requirements and you could boast, well, you know, if you do it, then you can have it too, you know, so forth. There ain't no boasting in the things of God because they're all by grace, praise God. There, there's, there's no great you, so forth. It's great God. He, he, what he offers is unconditional. Salvation is no strings. There wasn't, he didn't, you know, your cousin that's high might say differently, but I'm just telling you that the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It didn't say whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and quit lying shall be saved. It didn't say whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and don't you ever smoke no more dope. If you don't smoke no dope for, 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 for 90 days, then I'll save you and your salvation papers will, will flow through. It didn't say that. It didn't say that. There's no strings attached to your salvation. So that means he's able, therefore, he's able to save whosoever to the uttermost. Praise God. Because there's no strings attached to it. But my point is, is that God doesn't have different ways. He, he got, this is the way he deals. So if the most, if the greatest thing a person could ever receive, which is salvation, and he gives that unconditionally, <laughs> there ain't no conditions for healing neither. He's not, no, I'll heal you, but you better not touch them, uh, you, you better not touch them potato chips no more, so forth. Now, I'm not talking about if the Lord gives you a rhyme or something. I'm not talking about that. That's that, you know, so but I'm talking about in general, there, there is absolutely no strings attached. I'm not talking about the Lord speaks to you sovereignty and gives you spe spe specific instructions that you need to do, so forth. No, I'm not talking about that. But I'm just talking about healing as it is. There ain't no strings attached to that. That's yours. That's yours. No strings. No strings. Jesus, the Bible says, heal them all. He didn't check diet. He healed them all. There's meetings where everybody got healed. So that means that some abuser of, of, of some dietary law got healed, even though they didn't adhere to all the dietary laws perfectly, they got healed anyway. Praise God. There ain't not one person that Jesus ministered to that said, mm, I ain't going to heal you right now. Mm -mm. No, not, not, yet. not yet. And there's not one person. He never turned away anybody. It's unconditional. And this is it's, it's radical when you think about this. Because I believe that most people, they mental assent the gospel of grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and, and what I'm doing occupation wise now, um, so forth, is it, a degree of sales. So I'm talking to insurance people and different folks. And, you know, when I'm going, there, especially if they don't know me. And I'm, you know, kind of talking a little bit. And you know when someone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. give me your car. All right, thanks. You know, so forth. They're, they're just mental assenting. They're not listening to what you're really saying. And I believe a lot of Christians are guilty of mental assenting grace. Yeah, yeah, Jesus died for sins of the whole world. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. God's, God's good. They're mental assenting it. And they're not really meditating on the grace of God is given unconditionally. Now you might say, now, how can God give his grace, his power, his ability, and, 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 and put it at our disposal unconditionally, no strings? See, see we don't think like that because we, we think abuse. We think running out. We, we, think, we think like that. 
but but so how can God? So I was meditating on this. And I'm like God, you know. I was in defiance today. Praise God. And um, so when I was coming driving back, you know, so I'm just meditating on that, you know. And He was adamant. There are no strings attached to my grace. Did you not know there is grace for a supernatural turnaround? I think I might be ministering this, you know, this this coming weekend. That, that there is no strings attached. That there is grace. For a supernatural turnaround, where sin does about grace does much more. That's supernatural turnaround, so forth. The Bible talks about for your shame, you shall have double. It didn't even talk about if you brought on the shame, if you have something to do with the shame, if you deserve deserve the shame. It didn't say that. It just says shame. For your shame, you shall have double. That's grace for a supernatural. You, man, I'm telling you, that's absolutely awesome. It's great for supernatural. How can he do that? Well, there's three reasons, okay, that I can share with you in terms of why God can be so generous, but I'm going to share it with you tomorrow, all right? So God bless you. Hopefully this has been a blessing unto you, all right? And um, so forth, but I'm just telling you, we're just talking in this. So I'm just giving you little bite-sized pieces and all this. I hate to drop you off the corner, but I'm going to drop you off the corner, all right? And um, and we'll we'll talk more about this tomorrow. We'll pick up right here, I promise. We'll pick up right here, and we'll pick up right in terms of this particular point. How can God be so generous to make His grace available unto us unconditionally? This is awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. I want to encourage you to get on my website, PastorDavidRoberts.com. Pretty simple. And we got all kinds of wonderful things. We got messages. I'm doing a message every every weekend, you know, comes out every Sunday. And um, and you can um, listen to that um, so forth. We got these videos that we're making available as well, um, so forth. And, and you can become a partner if you want to partner with us and help us to do what we're going to be doing um, in the future here. Praise God. I got, you know, like I've, I've said it before, I I, I ain't lacking vision. I ain't, I ain't lacking vision. I got vision that's in layaway and been in layaway for a long time. But I'm ready and eager, excited about getting this vision out of layaway. Got a lot of people to help. I want to do something pre, um, in, in a big way. And, and I want people that want to help me do this. We want people, we want to help people here in Lima, in this community, and, 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 and begin to cause this thing to go further and further. I, I want to be able to, you know, because we got a ministry. We're not starting a church, so forth, to put people at ease, all right, so forth. But we are, we have launched a ministry. And, um, and I'm excited about this ministry, um, so forth, to be able to help people and to preach this gospel to people. You know, and I believe it's going to liberate a whole lot of people. It's going to help a whole lot of churches. It's going to expand the kingdom and bring it where it's not. Um, so forth. And, and we're really believing God. I'm personally believing God for 100 partners, people that will stand with me and assist me and being able to get this thing out here and to be able to do this thing at a bigger le um, level and to be able to bring the articulation. Um, because there's certain things that it, it's, it takes a certain voice to articulate it. I don't claim to be the, you know, the, the greatest preacher or the most revelatory individual. I don't claim that. But I do believe that God has put a grace upon my voice that there, there are people when they hear my voice, they hear me share the word that something comes alive in them. Something gets activated in them. They can relate. And, um, and I believe there's, a, there's, there's an audience out there and there are people that I, we have to reach. And the Bible makes it plain that, you know, we got to cause the word to get out there and have free course so forth. So that's what partnership is about. It's helping this word, helping the articulation of this great, great God. So this ain't about me. This is about Jesus and getting this thing out there to help a whole lot of people. All right. So I'm excited about it. I've always said that God has called me to the common man. And um, so forth. So I am the common man. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm excited about being able to help people that are just living ordinary lives, but they are in alignment with an extraordinary God. All right. So God bless you. We'll pick up tomorrow and talking about how can God be this generous. God bless you. See you tomorrow.